Opponent uh, headed uh, forward is Lucia Valentine, the Democrat, waiting for him in the general, and he joins us via telephone now. Chris, good morning to you, buddy. Uh, good morning, Rob. How are you? I am well. It's uh, it's a pleasure to congratulate you this morning. You and I have known each other for a good dozen years or so, and uh, I've said it many and, times. And you still talk to me. I and do. You still talk to me. I do. <laughs> yeah, and and I've, I said it before. I had I had two uh, big tree issues in my front yard that required a large chainsaw, and you drove down from Charleston and cut them up for me, and I'll never forget that, man. Much appreciated. <laughs> Absolutely glad to help with that. I'm always the chainsaw guy. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, uh, your race was very unique because we had the, the Speaker of the House actually do an ad for your opponent. Uh, first and foremost, uh, did you take that personally? And two, if you should win in the general, uh, do you feel like that would affect your relationship with Roger Hanshaw as you enter into the House of Delegates should you win in the general? Well, politics is politics, <clears throat> and you can't take things personally. But what you can take uh, a good look at is policy, okay? Um, I know, uh, first of all, before I forget, I want to thank my wife and all my volunteers for the hard work they put in. We knocked uh, close to 2,000 doors. Um, I'm a bit under the weather because we had people at the polls for 12 hours on Election Day, and I want to thank the voters uh, for, for voting for me. Uh, and, you know, when we talk about policy on those, you know, nearly 2,000 doors we, we knocked and, and the voters we talked to, um, they were sick of, uh, of, of the cronyism where their tax dollars are being used to prop up, you know, people like Bill Gates. They, they're tired of the rain tax. Uh, they're tired of politicians campaigning one way, saying they're going to work for the people and then get down to Charleston and, and sell their soul and, and start cutting deals left and right. So, um, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> I, I, you know, when it comes down, you know, the speaker was running the ads against me uh, because uh, he knows I'm not going to be a yes man. I'm not going to go down there and just bow down to whatever the Republican caucus wants. I'm here to fight for the voters of the 97th, uh, for individual liberty in the Constitution and true conservative principles. I'm not just going to go down there and play ball. Chris? As you move forward toward this general election, uh, first and foremost, do you know Lucia Valentine well or at all? I've met her at, I, I did have one debate at uh, Shepherd University. Um, I have, uh, I live, it's interesting when she filed, I walked out my front door and looked to the right about 250 feet and saw her house. <laughs> I looked okay. it up on my Google Maps. So this is like the Battle of Golf Course Road. Um, and uh, she's a very nice uh, young lady, but she's basically like having AOC uh, in West Virginia. She is a huge Green New Deal supporter. She's uh, rapidly anti-gun. She wants to fund uh, the mutilization of uh, uh, gender-confused minors, and she definitely wants to repeal our life at conception law. So while she's very nice and says wonderful things like, you know, clean air and clean water, what she's really saying is government interference in every section of your life and your taxes going up. So, um, you know, she's a nice young lady. Um, uh, she's very personable, uh, but her policies are absolutely wrong for West Virginia. John Gilstrap. Uh, morning, Chris. Um, congratulations. Morning. When I hear you say things like, um, you know, you're not going down there to cut deals and, and what have you. I, I know it, it resonates, it sounds good, but then th in the back of my head, I think, isn't that what politics is really about? Isn't it about compromise in the sense, not compromising principles necessarily, but compromising details? You know, it, as an example, a hypothetical example, you give a little on something like form energy in order to get something like locality pay. You know, it's you can't you can't have it all your own way. You've got to you've got to give and take a little bit. Isn't that what politics is all about? Absolutely not. Politics is not the art of compromise. Politics is the art of confrontation and fighting for your principles and your beliefs. Uh, too many people have convinced the voters that they have to stab them in the back uh, constantly by cutting deals and compromise, because any time you start to compromise, you start to lose your, your direction and you, and you start to uh, uh, hurt your voters that you're representing. Uh, no, it is not about that. It's about fighting for principle. Now, the advantage that I have is I've worked in state-level politics for 18 years. I know how the cake is baked or actually, in most cases, burnt and destroyed uh, by politicians. So I know the legislative procedure, and I especially know parliamentary procedure, and I know how to get down there and fight. I'm not going to be your typical new guy going in. I've led, you know, 
I would say probably 50 fights uh, across the country at the state level. And uh, I know how to fight and win, and compromise is definitely not one of them. Mr. Harvey. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Anders. Um, Thank you. How much of the the district, this is a, one of the, this is a newly formed district, which I guess they all are, but the 97 now comes into part of Jefferson County as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what's the breakdown? How many, how, how, what percentage of that district is in Berkeley versus Jefferson vote wise? Well, you, you had roughly uh, uh, three to four uh, voting precincts in Jefferson and the remainder uh, nine or so, eight or nine in uh, Berkeley County. So it's, it's majority Berkeley, but you do have a portion of Jefferson County. It's kind of, they took the district and it became almost like a Pac-Man shaped icon uh, around Shepherdstown. <laughs> it was funny how they carved out Shepherdstown. Right. Uh, but basically north, south, and west of Shepherdstown and Jefferson County is the district. What what percentage of the of the base would you the voters are in J- Berkeley versus Jefferson? Two thirds, uh, I think. Berkeley right? probably has sixty five to seventy percent. Sixty five to seventy percent. Um, okay. Would, would be would be my best guess. What are your priorities go- if you're successful in November? Well, obviously, I want to stop the cronyism and the corruption where taxpayer dollars are being sent to people like Bill Gates. I want to restore both economic and individual liberty. I am about as pro-gun as someone can get. <laughs> I mean, I've worked in pro-gun politics, passing constitutional carry in multiple states. I'm pro-life. I want to stop the flow of these baby-killing pills, because while we say we have life at conception in West Virginia, anybody can go on their phone at any time and order these pills in from out of state, and that needs to be stopped. Uh, full and complete school choice. I heard the segment before when you were talking about the failure you know, of our school system. It's always, you know, we're failing our children, and we need to you know, it isn't a matter of tweaking the system. We have to completely redo the system. It's broken. Throwing more money at it's not going to work. Instead, you know, restoring the power back to the parents and having full and complete universal school choice because we're in a country that says that the free market and competition breeds excellence, but yet we give government a monopoly over one of the most important items, and that's the education of our children. We have to break up that monopoly. There's too many uh, bureaucrats. There's, you know, they're teaching to the test, and you know, and and you have the left and the right fighting over who controls the government school system. It isn't a matter of who, you know. It has the ring to rule them all. It's a matter of destroying that ring and allowing freedom and liberty and the free market to work. But, Chris, that goes back to my other question about compromise. You're talking about rewriting the West Virginia Constitution because the the structure of the educational system is a constitutional issue. That's the way the educational system is, is written. You're going to have to mm-hmm. give on something. to get. You can't just say, I get everything I want. And then you have to change the Constitution to be what I want it to look like. It's, it's, just not, it's not going to work. You want it to work that way, so it's not going to work that way. Well, I guess we're going to see because I'm not going to cut deals and I'm not going to compromise. And I am going to stand and fight. People, you know, it's just like whether it's medical freedom or anything else. I'm a believer in liberty. I'm a believer in freedom, the free market, and the Constitution. And I'm not going to compromise on any of those issues. I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight and I'm not going to back down. Chris, during your campaign against Pam Brush, there were mailers that were sent. Uh, uh-huh. One of them with you looking like a, a scam a lot was what it was called. You, you're, you're dressed in night attire. Uh, you are, yep. if, not, if not directly accused, then at least shaded and hinted that in previous jobs, you raised a lot of money and effectively found a way to keep it for yourself or those who you wanted to give it to. And this amounted to more than six figures there were rumors at one point that you were being investigated for not actually living in the district uh your chance now to straighten all of that out uh are you indeed an embezzler of funds and a person who ran (laughs) illegally in your district no i live directly at golf course road in fact at the intersection of weinbrenner uh they came up with all type of lies and half truths because the last thing the speaker or any of the swamp in charleston wanted was for me to win the primary. They came up, they said, if you look at the figures, they said from 20, 2017 to 2024 that I had, you know, paid myself, I think it was like 100000 108000 or something like that. That's like $25,000 a year. And this is a full-time job. And, you know, I'm not in it for the money. You know, I'm in it for the principles. But, you know, you do like to eat. So, yes, I mean, that's what it did for a living. Um, and to pay yourself $25,000 a year, 
Uh, I can't see where somebody would, would say, oh, this person's scamming everybody. No, I've fought fights everywhere, um, you know, and I've traveled the country and, and, and done it on a shoestring budget uh, because I'm, like I said, I'm a true believer. Uh, you know, they, our founding fathers fought and died to create the freest country on the planet, but yet today, because of compromise, politicians have slowly eroded what they died for, and it's time to take that back. Are there any active investigations regarding anything involved with those funds or your residency about you that you are aware of? No, no, there's none at all. Are there any any pending that you're aware of? No, sir. No, sir. This was a swamp. This was uh, this was solar, by the way. A lot of the money came from uh, those who support the solar compounds going up everywhere, and they know that I'm going to fight against this. You know, the government using your money to prop up these green new pipe dream deals. And because of that, uh, they just started making up everything. It's politics. You know, uh, people sell their soul. I like to keep mine. Uh, I shoot straight. I, I tell you like it is. And the thing is, um, you know, they just want the power, and so they'll do anything to get that power. Trust me, it was not fun to see that stuff coming in and see the accusations. It, that's what keeps a lot of good people from running is the lies they make up. Uh, I've seen this happen all over the country. There might be a 1% or 2% you know, thing they can go back and say, oh, I'll hang my hat on that. And then they just blow the whole issue up. It's despicable, and, and the voters are sick of it. Chris, do you have any uh, planned meetings or town halls coming up any time in the near future before Election Day? Uh, well, of course, before the election, I absolutely will. Um, I will be going back out I, like I did before. I probably talked to, I don't know, 1,600, 1,700 voters. Uh, out of all the doors we knocked and at the polls. I mean, I'm here to serve the people and to fight to get their liberty back and their freedom uh, and, and to and to push the issues that matter and that are near and dear to them uh, that I'm able to do so under the Constitution. And, you know, it's I absolutely will be right now. <clears throat> I'm trying to recover. <laughs> you know, my grass was about three foot high, so I had to take care of that. Uh, so I'm taking a, a bit of a breather for a week or so and then uh, back into the fray. All right. Chris, good to talk with you again. Congratulations again, sir. Oh, thank you so much. You gentlemen have a great day. You too. Feel better. Chris Anders at 904. This is Talk Radio, WNR Martinsburg and TV 10.